so yes, yeah, so my name's Derek Dixon. I, um, yeah, I do a lot of stuff with fashion. So he yeah, has so asked me to do this workshop, which I've run a number of times at Alter Some T-shirts. We're gonna learn a little bit about uh, and cotton. So how many people are scheduled tuned in right now? Um, there's eight of us in total. Do we know? Eight of us? Um, okay. So um, I brought a visual. <laughs> so this is a little foggy because it was in my fridge, but this is one liter of water. So how many, if anyone wants to answer, like how many liters of water is one, are we supposed to drink in like a day as like an adult human being? Do we know? If anyone wants to take a wild guess. I'm going to make you do some math. So you're not gonna, six, is that what you said? That's so much. I was thinking three, I don't know, two to four. Okay, so the answer is technically three. <laughs> um, but glasses of water every day. Do you know how many in? If anyone wants to answer. I didn't actually do the math on that one, so I don't know, but we're getting to a grand total here, so. Anyone? What was your question again? <laughs> well, basically, so this is one liter of water. What's that? Oh, sorry. I, wanna, I basically want to know how much. Uh... Oh, I'm cutting out. Okay. A little bit, um... just a little. All right. Yeah, the reception I find is a little spotty here, but uh, so if everyone drinks three liters of water a day. How many liters of water does that work out in for a year? Like 900, like a thousand liters, maybe? Roughly. Does anyone have a calculator? I have anyway. a phone. 21 times 52. <laughs> All right, so I didn't, I guess I didn't set this up anyway, but so we're gonna think about for every t-shirt that is made in the world. So growing the cotton and doing the dyeing uh, is the equivalent, takes the equivalent of about three, two and a half to three years of someone's drinking water, which is the equivalent of 27, I think that's backwards, but it's 2,700 liters of water. So that's like, Oh, for one t-shirt. It's just for one t-shirt, that's wild. Just for one t-shirt. So if you think about the weight of this t-shirt versus like the weight of other, um, oops, other articles of clothing like jeans and uh, like heavier materials, you can multiply that by like two sometimes. So jeans, it's around somewhere around 75. Thousand liters of um, and finding out these statistics about water is like one of the main reasons that I got into doing things with secondhand clothing. So, um, if you're going to alter a t shirt tonight and sort of reincorporate it into your wardrobe, you can let people know that you've saved almost 3,000 liters of water, uh, which I think is pretty impressive, sort of in today's age. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the environmental impacts of recycling your t-shirts. Um, if your t-shirts are 100% cotton. Um, yeah, so the other thing about cotton is cotton is the number one uh, agricultural product for uh, pesticides and fertilizers. So. Um, if you think about all those things combined together, when you get into the habit of uh, rethinking clothing and t-shirts that you might already have, um, there's sort of a lot of uh, environmental benefits to that. So um, that's one of the things that really excites me about doing these workshops and hopefully it will excite you too. Um, so has anyone altered their own t-shirts before? Uh, like, is anyone familiar with how kind of Jersey works? Um, 
I guess here, I'm gonna switch around and draw a little quick diagram for you. Um, just to give you a hint. Of what we're doing here. So with um, most fabrics, like for button down shirts and jeans and things, the fibers go like this, they're woven together. Um, so that happens on a loom on like a grand scale. Um, <laughs> and then what we're going to deal with, though, is called cotton jersey, which is what t-shirts are made of, and it is called a knit fabric. So this is kind of produced in like a sheet. Um, and then knit fabrics are basically like, if you've ever seen anyone knitting, that's exactly how knit fabrics work there it's like one continual string that's just looped around and around itself um and jerseys actually tends to be formed knit in a tube which explains why when you get a t-shirt like this after you wash it a couple of times these seams start to shift over like this um and that is because it's not woven straight. Um, and this is also one of the things that happens that makes people really throw their t-shirts away is the seams will shift like this. But we're going to learn about what everyone, like the number one thing that people love to do to t-shirts is to crop them. So I'm just going to show you the easiest way to do that. Um, and that's a really easy way to kind of deal with that if it's something that um, you don't like. So for the first project, I guess we'll just uh, go with like a crop t-shirt. Um, oh yeah, I picked out a really cute one. There we go. There's also another um, really great way to kind of like deal with t-shirts that you might not like so this is kind of a perfect example of a great t-shirt to crop because if you look at the placement of the print on this t-shirt it lines up really nicely with um where you would want to crop something so um and the good thing about this is like i have no idea what this is this is kind of like makes the t-shirt sort of useless to other people who are not involved in whatever this is. So we're actually just going to cut it right across there and keep the donut with mess with us and the donut. And then we'll have a really cute little t-shirt when we're done. I love that. Um, yeah, so I do this all the time. And you can also just like take t-shirts and you can like cut the prints off of them and sew them onto other things. I have a whole a uh, series of jackets that I'm going to do that are made. I'm just like cutting the screen print out of the t-shirt and like using it like a like a patch basically. There's another way that you can reuse t-shirts. Um, so just to go for some like technical details, every time that you cut jersey, it's gonna roll. Like you can kind of see that happening with this little piece here. Um, that again is just the nature of the fabric. And like, that is kind of what it wants to do naturally. Um, so you wanna always kind of save probably a, like at least an inch more than what you want. Cause it is gonna roll at the bottom. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the structure of t-shirts sort of after this, but um this is kind of like this is like t-shirt alteration like 101 it's the pretty simplest thing that you can do and if you want to get really technical with something like this you don't have to because it doesn't really matter um you could cut with like a slight curve um just because that will sort of make it all like a straighter line on the body. Um, but it's a really, really small detail that you don't really 
doesn't really affect most people when they when they crop t-shirts um if you're doing like a woven fabric it would probably be more of a big deal because woven fabrics tend to keep their structure more so instead of going like like i want to get rid of this part and i'm going to just cut it and see what happens if i cut straight through it instead of cutting it off completely so if i cut straight through this in theory it should roll up enough to keep the donut mess with us um and just to be extra safe i'm going to measure how far up that is i'm going to go up about nine and a half inches um, and here's a fun trick if you don't have any chalk or anything to mark your t-shirt um you can take your measuring tape and you can grab it. Oops. <laughs> um, sorry about that. All right, so I don't know if you saw, so you can take your measuring tape if you don't have any chalk, put it at where you want and you can just grab it and you can like give it a little pinch. So what that does, it just like kind of leaves a tiny little impression on the fabric that you can like follow with your, this one's not doing it very well, but if, um, if I was doing more, it'd be okay. So I think I got enough. Oh, sorry, I did that one wrong. <laughs> Let me go up another inch on this one. Yeah, so I'm just gonna do it here. And I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna go for it, so. So we're gonna push there. So there we go. That's your crop t-shirt. And then if you want, what you should really do is just give it just a little stretch and then the roll can happen. So I can actually cut that right off because this one is not rolling quite as much as it would. Um, the thing with t-shirts and altering t-shirts is let you always cut less. You can always cut more if you need to. So like, um, always like doubt yourself and give yourself more t-shirt than less because you can always take more away. So I'm not going to go up any more than just the top of the text here to get rid of it completely. Because you're going to want to make sure with t-shirts um, if you're sort of like more gifted in the chest area you want to give yourself longer t-shirt just so you have enough coverage if that makes sense so one thing that you can do if you have a measuring tape um, i'm just going to flip this around here again for a second and... If you have a measuring tape, you can just measure um, with chalk. You can like just measure down from the shoulder seam how far you want to go. And then you can make your line on the t-shirt and just cut from there. So that's a nice segue into the next little part, which is kind of the structure of a t-shirt. So I'm going to flip this around here again. So a t-shirt is basically made up of these few seams here. So there's always like the neckline, there's always usually a shoulder seam. Um, sometimes there's a side seam, sometimes there's not a side seam. There's a hem here. And usually hems there. Um, and there's usually a seam under the under the armpit as well. So like when I was talking earlier about the t-shirt and the jersey um, kind of shifting and rolling when you wash and cut them, um, once you start 
like sort of cutting into you or removing these the seams that are in the t-shirt the t-shirt's going to start to um lose its like structure and shape so like all of those things are kind of what's holding the t-shirt and the fabric in in place so um so like when you start when you cut this hem off like that's what causes the t-shirt to roll um if you cut into these like your sleeves will start to roll if you cut into your neckline then uh this will start to roll so um so you want to keep that in mind when you're when you're cutting things um and i'm going to show you one of my favorite things to do with altering a t-shirt um and it's just like a really simple and easy way to um, kind of give like a t-shirt a fun edge uh, without losing any of the structure that I was talking about. So my favorite thing to do with pretty much most of the t-shirts, like most of those just like plain t-shirts that I have just to make them a little bit more exciting is I, I'll like cut off the hem um, or like I'll cut off the collar, but I will like leave the seam. So the seam here is like keeping the structure of the t-shirt, but then if we cut into it to about here, what that does is it gives us this like cool kind of like rock and roll, like raw edge on the t-shirt. Um, and I mean, it seems like a really small detail, but I always find it has a really, really big impact on how my t-shirts look. Um, the only t-shirts I don't usually do this to are my band t-shirts, but that's just because I love them so much. Um, so you can just see I'm just like, just going with my scissors and just like cutting around. It's a little like tough when you get to the, where all the same seams meet. Um, and the good thing with Jersey is that if you cut it or you make it a, a, a mistake, um, it's not gonna fray. You will, you'll have a hole, but um, it shouldn't get any, any worse. So I don't know if you can see that, but it just like kind of makes this cool little like mini collar. Um, and it changes the proportion a lot and kind of makes it, I feel like it, I do this to a lot of shirts that I wear like in the summertime, kind of makes it a little bit um, sort of more like, more like that. And you can do the same, like I usually do the same to the hems on my t-shirt. So I'll just like cut the hem of the t-shirt off, but leave the seam there. So, so the fit of the t-shirt overall stays the same, but then you just get these like kind of fun little like, like raw edges that, you know, make it a little spicy. Um, and I think I might just crop this one off too, because I got this one with, you. it's like another great example of a good t-shirt. Most t-shirts are actually printed sort of across the chest. So a lot of them are really, really great for turning into like crop tops and things like that. Um, so I'm gonna make this one just a little bit longer just to be safe this time. And I just folded it where I wanna cut it. The thing with t-shirts is like, I don't know, you don't have to be perfect. Like when they roll, they kind of like hide all your um, uneven edges, my scissors are dull, being a little bit of a jerk, but, oops. So yeah, so I'm like not even really thinking about it too much. <laughs> Probably should think about it a little bit more maybe. Um, the good thing is I left lots of room, so I could cut another inch or two off of that one if I wanted. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of like version two of the crop tops with the, with the raw edges. Um, I have a question. Yeah, sure. Um, the amount that the t-shirt rolls or like doesn't roll, does that have to do with like the material that it's made of? Like percentage of, yeah. I don't know, like elastic or something? Um, yeah, so the two that I just did were both 100% cotton. Um, and the fabric is fairly not stretchy for a t-shirt, if that makes sense. Um, so it's, these two don't roll 
a whole lot, but some of the ones that I have coming up are really, really stretchy. So we'll see how much they roll. Um, and see what happens there. Um, okay, so I'm gonna show you a couple little um, techniques with Jersey. If you've got a t-shirt there, maybe you can start doing, like you can start working on something if you like, or maybe incorporating some of these techniques. Um, the first one I'm gonna show you is just like a basic, basic like cut, like what happens when you cut into Jersey. So this is really just a black piece of Jersey. I just folded it over, which is a really easy way to get some good cuts. Um, so I'm gonna do a little cut. Then I'm gonna do a bigger cut. I'm just gonna keep getting bigger. Just to show you sort of how the jersey acts differently when you have a different set. So I made a few different cuts. We're gonna give it a little pull because that'll cause them to roll. And this is what it looks like. So the less you cut, the less it rolls and the less sort of it separates. But then the more that you cut, the more it rolls and the more it separates. Does that make sense? So you can literally make cuts like this into t-shirts anywhere. You can like make your own design, your own patterns. You can cut any length you want. Um, a couple of the things that you want to remember when um, doing a, t a cut in a t-shirt. So I'll show you one of my favorite techniques. And if I have a chance to get around to it, I'm gonna, I want to do a whole t-shirt in this, um, is I fold it in half. But I'm going to make angled cuts into it. And I'm going to keep them really small. Because um, I'll show you what happens if you do an angled cut and it's too big. Um, so, yeah, so that is what that looks like when you do an angled cut. Um, so, you get these little like flaps. And why I say um, keep these small is if you do a big one, it kind of just like, I guess, I mean, there is a time and place for everything. I think like that could work somewhere. That's kind of neat actually. So um, I'm constantly proving myself wrong whenever I say there are rules. So. If you think that there is a rule to how these t-shirts could be altered, then it's probably, there's probably a way to break it. Um, you can also do lots of like other different textures as well. Um, let me see, let's try, let's try folding it. And so let's fold it in four and we're gonna do just like, just like cut a corner and we'll see what happens. So, I mean, that didn't really work out super great, <laughs> but um, if you have old t-shirts, I would say just cut some pieces like this and just cut into them and, and see what happens. So this is kind of the most common thing that people do to t-shirts is just slashing them. A lot of people like to slash them and then they'll like, safety pin them back together, or you can like make like a super slash t-shirt, like just slash it all over and then wear it over like another t-shirt, which is what I'm hoping I have time to get done today. Um, but we'll see what happens. Uh, so the last little technique, how are we for time? We're good, um, it's just seven o'clock now. Oh, perfect. So there's all the time left. Um, yeah, so I think the last little technique that I'll show you um, is going to be just like another thing that people do a lot, which is a fringe, like a t-shirt fringe. Um, and it's funny, I, a friend of mine I saw on the internet the other day, he's a designer in Moncton. Um, who also, it's uh, Dia, you remember Dia, Lauren? Yeah, right? I just, yeah. So, yeah. So they were making this like robe earlier today and the entire robe has a Jersey fringe on it, which I thought was really funny. Cause I, it was like my big plan for today was to do a, a Jersey fringe. Um, 
So with the Jersey fringe, what you want to do is like, uh, you're basically just making like splashes at the end of the fabric. Um, I find the easiest way to do it is to like use, like this is almost the perfect width for a fringe. You can make them as thin or as thick as you want. I find this is like really great for like the fringy effect. So what I usually do is I just like, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So just follow the width of your um, measuring tape as you're cutting. If you had a rotary cutter and a metal ruler, that would work really well. Um, and like, it, like that's not a very straight line. Like I'm, I'm rushing, but it doesn't really matter because it's all gonna just roll away anyway. Um, you could also just draw these out. It's probably way easier to draw them out. Would you cut the seam off the bottom first or not necessarily? Um, you don't have to. Like, if you didn't cut the seam at the bottom first, there, there would be, like, like, it would give more shape to the end of the fringe. Do you know what I mean? Like, there would be, like, a wider, like, right. it would be, like, hemmed at the bottom. Right. Which would could be really like... cool. Do you know what I mean? Like, that could be, like, a thing, right? Um, you can also take these and, like, put a knot on the end and a bead on them if you want or something like that. So, um, that's really fun. Like, there's so many different things that you can do. Um, oh, I'm going to show you one last. Um, yeah, we'll do it with this one because it's kind of fancy. So we're going to make another crop shirt, but we're going to do a shirt that's like cropped and tied. Um, and it's, it's like way, way simpler than a lot of people think. It's kind of one of the easiest ways to like do a fancy t-shirt alteration and like, I don't know, be kind of sneaky about it. <laughs> so, um, sorry, this one's a little bit linty. Um, so yeah, so I don't know if you can see we're at the side of the fabric. So like, this is your hem on the bottom. Um, we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make um, like a tie, like a tie on the side so that you can like um, kind of have like a crop top with like two side, two, yeah, two side ties. Um, I'm gonna cut the hem off of this one just because I've never done this before and I'm not, the less fabric I have to deal with. That'll be easier for right now. Uh, I'm gonna give myself like some room. So I want the tie to be around here somewhere, um, but the tie is actually gonna be from here. Um, so we're gonna cut like a U shape into the fabric. And I really hope this works because, like I said, I've never done this before. Um, let me go into this one. Um, so yeah, so we've got that piece. And what I'm going to do here is um, measure. I'm going to cut the same shape roughly out of the other side. I feel like I'm missing a step. Oh, it is in the disaster. Oops. Yeah, so now this is what the bottom of my shirt looks like, which is kind of funny, but what we're going to do is we're just going to cut the seam. Well, let's just cut it right out, actually. Okay. And then 
put it there. So now you've got this like kind of funny big spot here, <laughs> and then you tie them together. Um, I hope that this works out okay. And then, <laughs> I don't know if that actually worked or not. You might want to experiment with that a little bit more. I might have cut too far into the side, but it looks kind of like a bodysuit. Anyway, basically, anytime you want to make a tie with something, you cut um, a U shape. So that gives you like the area that like needs to be tied. If that makes sense. Um, maybe they were supposed to go the other way. Anyway, that was a bit of a disaster. So we'll just forget that that one happened. <laughs> um, does anyone have any questions? For the tie that you did, were, were you tying it, um, the two in the front or were they one on each side? It was like two, there was like two on each side. Oh, sense. okay. Yeah, but I have to, I've done that one like, oh, I haven't done that one before, but I've seen other people do that one before. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think maybe if you draw it out on your own body with some chalk where you want the tie to go, mm. uh, it might work a little bit better. So like, you can do that with sleeves, it works really well. Like if you cut the U shape out here, then you get kind of one of those like slit sleeves that ties at the side. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so, yeah. That I'm works. just trying to adjust my tripod. And that was the next thing whoops, that I was gonna talk about, the sleeves. It's been wobbling all over the place. Oops. Um, all right, let's see here. Oh yeah, so another thing that people really like to do is like altering the proportion of sleeves. Um, oh. Like this here, this... oh, okay, there we go. Um, so most, if you get like a general t-shirt, um, the sleeve is kind of like a bit of a boxy sort of shape. It's usually even more square than this. Um, so that's like your kind of like standard like Gildan t-shirt that most people screen print on. Um, but there's also, there's so many different things that you can do with a sleeve um, just to like give it a bit more of an edge. Like if you can cut it, like if you cut it like this on an angle, um, it tends to make shirts look a little bit more feminine um, and you can like curve that you can like um, you can do the little like tie thing that I was telling you about. Um, if you want to make a sleeveless t shirt there's a couple different options. Usually I recommend like cutting the sleeve off and leaving um, the sleeve on the armhole because that sort of keeps the structure there, um, but then once you start getting into like cutting into this part, you can like make like a tank top. So um, tank tops can be challenging. I've ruined many t-shirts trying to get the right cut of a tank top. Um, the best way that I found to cut a tank top is to actually just put it on and draw your lines on with chalk, um, like looking in a mirror and then cut it after. Um, so yeah, so, okay. I'm gonna like just, if any, if no one has any questions, um, I might just start like making a couple things if that's cool and like kind of describing what I'm doing. Um, if, if, unless anyone, yeah, like has any questions about what they're doing or anything about their project. Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm gonna make 
this into a fringed crop top. This is kind of a sea foamy t-shirt. Um, but I'm gonna save the hem of this t-shirt for the next project. I'll show you how to make a, draw, a drawstring. Um, if you have a drawstring, there's also a lot of stuff that you can do with t-shirts. Um, you can actually just cut a hole in here anywhere if you want. Like any of the hems that are here, you can put a drawstring in them if you wanted. So you can drawstring the bottom of like any of your t-shirts. Um, but you can actually make a drawstring out of this as well. And then you can like cut whole, like little holes in your t-shirts and put a drawstring in wherever you want. Like you could put a drawstring like going across this way if you want and like gather it there or you can like gather it across the bottom. Um, what I want to do for the next project is basically like take a masculine t-shirt and like make it a feminine shape uh, using drawstrings. Um, but first I'm going to make this crop, fringe crop. Um, so when you're making a fringe crop, you want to think about the kind of like proportion to like if I was gonna make this a fringe crop, I wouldn't crop it and then fringe it. I would think about, so what I'm gonna do basically is like, you want your crop top and then you want your fringe. So I'm not gonna cut any more off of this t-shirt. I'm just gonna cut the fringes up to where I would want it if I was cropping it. Does that make sense? I'm gonna do this really, really quick. Um, I'm just gonna do some quick measurements here. So I'll probably go up this one to about, do like a good seven inch fringe on here. Make little pinches. This one pinches really well. So if you don't have any tape, you can just pinch your fabric a few times and then you'll know. So like if I just take that and pinch it, take this, get a little pinch. Then I've got my line, basically. Whenever I'm doing these workshops, I'm always trying to think about the fewest things I can use that people already have at their house. So most every person has an extra t-shirt and a pair of scissors. Um, and there's like, literally endless things that you can do with that. So I'm gonna start by going, I'm gonna cut both layers at a time, just to save time. Um, the nicer you want these things to look, obviously the more time you would take. So you can measure these all out. You can make them all straight. You can make them all perfect sizes. You can use sharper scissors than I have. Um, So yeah, so like some of these are a little wonky, but the, this is the beauty of Jersey is that perfection is secondary. So um, it's a really, really, really forgiving material. I've worked with it like a lot over the years. Um, I used to make all these Jersey scarves that were just pieces of Jersey that were like, like slid in patterns like these. And, um, oh, that was the other thing I was gonna do is I wanna make a, I wanna cut out a happy face. I just cut this seam out in particular. Yeah, so after this, we'll try, we'll do like a, we'll do like a skull cut out on a black t-shirt after this. And then we'll do the shirt with the drawstrings after that. If there's time, how are we doing for time? Um, at the end, what I'll do is I'll show you all the projects that were made. And then 
C. Um, I've always wanted to go to um, like a music festival, like Savvy Fest or something, and just set up a booth with a bunch of like blank t-shirts and like live cut them for people. I always thought that would be a really fun thing to do. I probably shouldn't have cut that off now that I'm thinking about it because it will leave a little blank space in our fringe. Um, so this is a bit of a, this is like a more cottony t-shirt. <laughs> so it's, you want to give it a good tug on all your fringes just to make sure this one doesn't really want to roll as much as the other ones, but uh, you can kind of do them all at once if you want. Uh, is anyone making anything over there? Has anyone like cut any t-shirts or anything up? I don't know if you can share. Yeah, feel free to share your video and your mic, guys. Um, I, I, I've cut the, the bottom off. This you what? This Oh, I was just saying I've cut like the I've been following along what you're doing there, but I uh, I started to cut the fringe, but I realized I've had too many cups of tea today and my hands are very shaky, so I'm gonna wait. <laughs> right. Until uh, yeah. Well, like I said, it doesn't have to be too perfect, but you know, it can be a little tedious if your hands are shaking. I should have picked a different T-shirt for this one. This one's kind of I don't know if you can see. It's a bit of like, it's almost like a micro rib fabric, like like that. So. It's not rolling as much as like a knit jersey would normally roll, but it is still, you know, we still do have a fringe. So if I cut that out of, where'd my fringe fabric go? Yeah, if I had done that out of this other t-shirt material, like basically the squishier the jersey, so like, Oh, that one didn't really work that well either. <laughs> anyway, the one, even that one's a little strange. Uh, basically, the squishier the jersey, the more it'll stretch out and like the kind of like flimsier it will get when you cut it. Um, yeah, so the French t-shirt is moderately, moderately successful. Um, I feel like if I had some more time to work on it, I could probably get, I'd probably like, cut those in half and then they would probably roll better. But for now, I'm just gonna move on to the next one. Um, let's see here. This one I think I'll do on the back. So, so I got a big mess going on here. So I don't have any chalk to do this. <laughs> um, but I'm going to see if I can make a sort of smiley face maybe. Let's see what we can do here. Um, I'm just gonna go right to it. So that's like, kind of okay for some people, some people do not like that approach. Um, as you can see, it hasn't been always successful this evening, but um, there are a lot of t-shirts out there. So if you can get your hands on some, it's always a fun thing to practice. Um, okay, so I said we were gonna do a skull. So let's see if I can like cut out kind of a punky little skull here. So I'm just kind of making slits where I want to put things. And we'll stretch them out and see how they look. So I've obviously got to do like bigger eyes here. Oops. So I'm going to take this and just hold it so I can cut it. I want to be really careful when you're sort of picking your t-shirt up and moving it around and cutting it because you can sometimes cut it in places that you don't want to. So um, 
And like I said, always doing, cutting less is always better than cutting more to begin with. So let's cut some like lopsided eyes. <laughs> Maybe this will just be a bit of a weird, I don't know if you can see what's happening there. Can you see? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Um, That's cool. We will see that, okay? So if you had chalk, you could literally just like, you could find something on the internet and just like sort of do like, you wanna keep like obviously a really simple um, kind of image. So I've got the eyes and the nose in there. Um, and then I'm just gonna do a bunch of teeth. Let's see how that works. So we're gonna do like two rows of teeth. So it'll kind of make a little smile. And then I'm just gonna make a bunch of little slits. I'm just pretty much gonna look like Jack Skellington, so hopefully Eos won't get sued for me saying that. <laughs> um, or like copyright infringed or whatever they say. I think we'll be okay. Um, so yeah, so let me stretch that out, stretch it out here. Um, I don't know, I kind of dig it. It's not a traditional skull face. But let me see if I can find something to stick in there so that you can see what it looks like. Oops. Uh -huh. I didn't see if anyone shared anything. Did anyone make anything? Or is everyone kind of just watching? OK, you ready for this? Very cool. So, so yeah, so you can do lots of different things. I find one of the really fun things to do with um, altering t-shirts is like cutting designs into them and then like wearing them over another t-shirt of a contrasting design. Um, but yeah, so that was that one. Um, The last one that I want to do is this one here. Um, okay, so this is the t-shirt that I want to basically like turn into like a like a women's t-shirt. It's a it's a men's t-shirt or like. It's a masculine t-shirt right now and um, sort of, I want to sort of give it like a feminine shape. Um, so one of the things that often people like to do is they'll get clothes and sizes that are bigger and like alter them down. Um, there's a bit of like controversy with those things. Um, when it comes to people like purchasing plus size garments and altering them down because they're not as readily available for plus size people so it's not something that i always like encourage people to do but i feel like with this exercise um i'm probably only altering it down like maybe a size um and i think that that is okay um a lot of people will buy like two or three sizes bigger than what they would normally wear and alter it down, but that does take sort of clothes out of um, the hands of some people who don't, they're not as like as readily available as sort of like standard size garments. So we sorry, always try to be conscious of those things when you're thrifting second hand. Um, so yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this. So this is a bodysuit made of Jersey. Um, I'm gonna, I wanna put a t-shirt over it. 
later if I have enough time. Um, but I'm going to make a drawstring. I was going to use the other piece, but I don't think it's going to string as much as I wanted to. So really quickly, I'm just going to cut the bottom off of this. And this is a really, really stretchy one. So it should work really well. Put that away for next time. Um, did wash all these today. So always making sure to work with clean fabrics when we're altering things. Um, I'm just trying to get uh, like a square piece cut, square-ish piece cut, so I can show you how to make a drawstring. This is not very sharp. The more squishy your jersey is, the more sharp you want your scissors to be. Neither of mine are very sharp at the moment. Um, but making string out of jersey is pretty much the easiest. Pretty, pretty easy. Um, I'm going to cut this in like four places, I think. So I'm going to start. I'm going to cut it down the middle. see here everyone can see what I'm doing. everyone see what I'm doing okay so I've cut it down the middle and I've saved maybe about an inch at the end here um and now I'm gonna flip it down and I'm gonna cut it to about the same distance on both of these um I hope I made this long enough. It should stretch out quite a bit, so should be okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly just like kind of round those little corners. Um, they should stretch out relatively okay, but if I round the corners, then I won't get any tiny little little flaps. So. So that everyone sort of see what I did there. So I can like lay it back out into a square kind of. Um, a tiny bit more. Basically like, left. what's that? Oh, I was just saying if you move it a tiny bit more, I don't know if that's my left or your left, there you go. Oh yeah. Yeah, so I basically like kind of cut it into an M shape. And so what that does is it gives me one long piece of Jersey. And it's gonna just like ripped a little, but it's just gonna like kind of stretch it out. Be really careful when you're stretching because you could could rip it. So now I have this like long drawstring. So I've got a few little like rogue pieces here. So I'm just gonna like kind of clean this up a little. I would leave some of that. You can always like twist it together to kind of make it. A little bit more noticeable or a little less noticeable. Um, but this is like kind of a really rough, rough and dirty drawstring. Um, and then I'm gonna crop this t shirt and save myself some room, extra room on the bottom. So I think I'm gonna cut it. I think I'm gonna cut maybe like four or five inches off the bottom here. That was not very even at all. But I'll just, uh... should, have, should have done the pinch. And then where I would, I guess, kind of guess, I'm just gonna guess about where the, probably about halfway about with what I've got left here now. Um, I'm just gonna make a bunch of little slits all along here. If you want, you can, I'll measure them out. So, um, about 22 inches across there. 
I feel like for the most part, people are pretty good at guessing their own proportions when things with clothing. So you can you can try this on and mark these all that you like. Um, but it, there's also a time and place for trusting your gut with when it comes to fashion, especially. So um, what if I let's just say I did. Let's see, let's do every two inches. You can every inch would probably be a little bit more um, fancy. And I'm not even being that accurate. Um, so I'm just like kind of going, just making like the tiniest little slit through both layers. Um, I'm gonna go all the way across. I'm just gonna go real quick. Um, hopefully this is going through all the layers. If not, you can always cut again. Then it's gonna get a little hole. You can see I've got a bunch of little holes all across here. And then I chose this really nice bright little string. Um, yeah, and we're just gonna feed it through. So start on one, start on the front. And so you wanna go in, like on the one that's on the side, like you wanna go in on that side and then, yeah, so just like go this way. Um, as it, uh, has anyone like done any shirt altering before? Or like altered any other clothes of theirs before? I've cut this. I always find that this, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, I've cut the sleeves off a shirt before. Nice. Um, and yeah. I didn't realize that thing about the fabric and how it um, like curls, but yeah. Yeah, that's the one thing is like, that's why you always wanna leave extra like you can always cut more if you have to um but it is always better to be safe than sorry um just because yeah the roll and all jersey like rolls a little differently i've worked with a lot of different jerseys before but like everyone i've worked with this evening um has kind of acted differently than the others so like even this one this one's like a pretty heavy like the shirt that I'm like this one the one I'm altering is pretty heavy so it's like not rolling a lot um and the weave is pretty dense but this one is like really really squishy so it like it rolled right up into this like little drawstring um and yeah so like if you were, like if I was doing these like for someone or like for myself, I'd probably take like a little bit more time to um, be like accurate and things like that. So I should have had an extra hole, um, but basically, so my drawstring is on the inside because I'm one one hole short. Um, but yeah, now you have this like cute little uh, gathered gathered t-shirt. So what I would do, like I would probably do twice as many holes on the bottom here, because um, what that will do is it will give you more of like a ruffle. Um, but yeah, but then you kind of have this like, I don't know if you can, here I'll flip around and show you because it's better not on the table. Can everyone see that? So yeah. it's kind of like this cool little like belted t-shirt. Mm -hmm. um, and if I had, like what I planned on doing too is I was actually 
I want to do a couple little drawstrings on the um, sleeves, but I think I will just put this aside for right now and do the other one that I want to do if if we've got time. What's our time at now? Um, it's seven thirty-five. Okay. So yeah, I got some time to do one last one. Did anyone have any questions about like this kind of method? Like putting a drawstring in. The beautiful thing about Jersey is that when you cut a hole somewhere, it's not going to fray. So um, you don't really have to worry too much about like finishing things or wearing like a whole, whole lot. But, um, but yeah. So what am I going to do for this last one here? I was going to use the black t shirt, but I used both of them. So um, let's try it with purple. So this one's another like, like when I say t shirt, it's basically it's more the fabric than it is the object. So like this is just like a, um, like a turtleneck. Um, it's the same kind of fabric. It's really, this one's really, really squishy too. So it's going to like roll a lot. Um, but I'm just going to like really quickly kind of go to town on this so I can show you, try to do something really cool. Um, I really just want to get rid of the neck of this like right away. So I'm going to keep. While I'm working on a t-shirt, I generally try to keep the seams in place because it holds the structure of the t-shirt a lot while you're, like if you're cutting a design into it and then one, and like also want to cut a shape into it, I would cut the design into it first um, and then cut the shape after because it'll be a lot easier for you to like cut a design into something if you have, more of the structure of the t-shirt. Um, so I want to do like a full, basically like a full tank top on this one, and then I'm going to distress it. Um, I'm probably, yeah, I'm going to start doing, I'm going to do a little, so the easiest way to cut designs into the front is to cut, is to fold it in half and line up your side seams. And if you line up your side seams, then this is the middle of your t-shirt. So you can do slits down the middle of your t-shirt. Um, and you can just keep folding it to get to keep things symmetrical. So I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. Um, all right, so. This is the front. You want to make sure it's lined up on the top too. And I'm going to do those little angled cuts, like I said, or like I did before. But I'm going to do really, really small ones. And I'm going to actually cut them so that they like fall down. Um, and I'm not going to go down too, too far because I want to have enough space to make a nice clean crop at the bottom. So like I said, cut less and then you can cut more after. Um, I'm going to do this again while I have it folded this way. The same on the back. Um, so again, we'll just like check up, uh, make sure our side seams are lined up. Make sure that top seams are lined up. Uh, and there is our center. So let's do more of these. And I'm, what I want to do basically is cover the whole shirt in this. So now, if I want to do a design in here, um, I'm going to pretend that, so if I want to do a design in, like in the, 
Okay, sorry. So this is the front of the shirt and then this is the side of the shirt. If I want to do a design in this part of the shirt, I have to like pretend that these two are my sides or like my sides now. So as best I can, I'm going to try to fold the shirt down there. So this is kind of like the quarter, quarter part of your, of your body. And it doesn't always lie flat. So you want to make sure that you've got a nice like flat, that the fabric is like flat on both sides before you cut it. I'm gonna do this on the actual side seam too. We'll see how that goes. And here, and the other ones. I'm gonna do the same here. So just try to line up pretty roughly where those two areas are. That the more time that you put into like measuring things out and things like that, the probably happier you'll you'll be with the results. But again, the quick and dirty, dirty punk t-shirt has a long and profound history in the world of fashion. So you can work as quickly and precisely or as, or as slowly and precisely as you like or as quickly and dirty as you like. Um, each will kind of produce a different result. Um, did I get both sides one on? No. Um, so it kind of doesn't look like a whole lot just yet, but it'll kind of take on a new life when I start cutting up the rest of it because the rest of the shirt will eventually start losing its shape too. And when I stretch everything out, this shirt ideally should kind of just look like a fun texture. So um, yeah, I've got all the spots cut. Now I'm gonna crop it, um, but I know that I've cut one too low, so it's probably not gonna crop quite. Oh, they're not going to crop quite as nicely as I had hoped. Um, and then, so I want this to kind of be just like, like a little like summery textured tank or like a little texture that you'd like put over another shirt. I'm just going to really quickly cut this whole arm out. I'm cutting the seam out of this arm as well um, because I really want to like, um, I kind of want to make it like really like light and airy and loose. So the more I cut away from it, the sort of like looser and more stretched out it will get. Um, take out my tag. So yeah, so if I wanted this shirt to like, be more structured or be more like kind of like a muscle or gym shirt, then I would probably leave the seams in there because um because I won't do that. So this is like kind of where we're at. It's a little little blah, a little bland. Um, but now we're just gonna take it around. So if you ever make a mistake in a, with a jersey t-shirt, um like cutting mistake or whatever, and it bugs you. Like these are all over the place. So you can see that none of them are like super, super even. But we're just gonna like give it a really big stretch that way and a really big stretch this way. Um, and I might even go in here again and just like cut some more, some more holes. I don't think I cut these like quite as big as I was hoping. Um, yeah, so now we have this like kind of cool Fun little like tank top, um, but I saved this one because I wanted to layer them on top of each other and see what happens. 
I think like with the distressed teacher that like layering is kind of where it's really at if you want to have a lot of fun with it um because then you can just kind of make all your this is not like yeah I would probably want to go back in and like cut all these like way bigger looking at it <laughs> but you can kind of get the idea so um yeah oh it looks like a little better on the back actually can people kind of see um that's very cool <laughs> uh one what else can we do how much time do we have left um it's 7 um 46. 746. okay so i'll show you one last little technique which is another kind of thing that you can do all over your t-shirts if you want um probably would have been better if i had a rotary cutter for this one but you can make basically like turn any t-shirt you want into like a mesh shirt by doing a very like basically by doing the same thing that I just did but by like cutting it way closer together so yeah so if you have a piece of jersey and you want to do like mesh with it or like um like a chain link or something kind of it's pretty easy and you want to do it like really close together so we're gonna do probably about a centimeter apart and maybe an inch long let's go up about halfway here and then what we're going to do, so we've got our slits like right here. So we're going to like fold over. Hmm, what's the best way to do this? Kind of? So we need to like basically fold in two. Basically folding over just a little bit onto where it's cut already. Um, sorry, there's a crease there, so it's being a little difficult. So yeah, so it's like the slit continues like further under the fabric. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, so you wanna be really careful. But we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna do it between the cuts that we just had. So we're gonna, we're gonna do a little bit an inch. Um, this is getting into the real like fine, fine jersey skills, I would say. So yeah, so I did that. And then we're gonna do it one more time with the lines that we just made. And hopefully, I might have started a little too small. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know if I can quite do that, but if we stretch it, you can start to see that we get these like, you get like a chain link kind of pattern. Does that make sense? So now that it's stretched, I can see a little bit better. So we'll do a few here to kind of show you what I mean. You're kind of like cutting between this, like the slits that you already already made. So, like if I went in here and just like cut in between those, um, yeah, you sort of start to get that um, chain link. It's not very apparent right now because I was doing this really quickly, but um, 
you can see that they're like starting to like kind of link in like between each other, especially right here. Um, yeah, I don't know. Does anyone have any last questions? I feel like I kind of ran through a lot of stuff, but um, maybe not as uh, thoroughly as I should have. So if anyone has any questions about anything, um, let me know. Um, do you want to see what we made? I can show you that. Yeah. Um, so we made this one, which was a bit of a disaster, but still has potential. I might go back and rework it and cut it. Um, and then we've got, we did the drawstring. Um, let's get that fixed up. So we get, yeah, we did the drawstring on the bottom with the little gather. And then we got our fringe crop here, which I should have used a different t-shirt for. We got our smiley face skeleton t-shirt. Uh, we got our donut crop. And bright and bold with the raw edges and keeping the structure. Um, yeah, that's all I've got. I can show you like a real quick and dirty tank top. Sure. I have a question about um, the fringe. Sure. Um, Cause I've, I've been doing one, but it has um, um, the seam on each side. Do I just cut like straight down? Um, the like do you know what I mean like there's this part and I just wonder oh it has a side seam yeah it has side seam on both sides um what I would what I would do is let me see if I can find one here that has a side seam okay so this one here has a side seam mm -hmm. um and if you can feel on the side seam like the actual seam on the back mm -hmm. It tends to lay in one, like towards the front or towards the back, depending on who, it, like how it was like pressed when it was made. Yeah. Um, so what I would do is I would like cut along the side. Um, so like, for example, on this one, mm -hmm. like if I held it this way, mm -hmm. the, the seam on the bottom, you can kind of see it, it like, it lays to the, to the, like it's pointed towards the floor. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I would like cut above it. Oh, okay. Um, because this jersey in the front should hide it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I know what you mean. But like if you cut it like right there, what should happen? Um you can also, yeah, you could also just cut the side seam out on the side, like up until that point too. So you could do that too. But if you don't want to do that, if you cut this one part here, like the side seam should kind of lay flat behind okay. the fringe. Does that make sense? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so just like kind of cut it how it's like naturally laying and it should hide. It will hang a little bit differently than the other fringes, but it shouldn't, I don't know. A lot of people don't notice those kind of like small details, I find. Yeah, and it's on the side, so I, you know. Yeah. Um, do you want to, I wonder if I can, I'm going to see if I can do a one cut tank top. <laughs> Ooh. So I've got my t-shirt here, it's got a cute little pocket. Um, I'm gonna fold it in half. Might be a two cut tank top because I feel like I'll probably wanna cut the neck after um, to give it more of a tank top shape. But this is what I was talking about about how jerseys in a tube and like the side seams don't always line up properly. Um, so if you're gonna do this, I would try really hard to to kind of make it lay as flat and close as possible. Um, so yeah, so let's see here. We've got this line. I've got all my layers together. 
And ideally, so if you think about a tank top, like the strap of a tank top is kind of like in further, like this is where your shoulder bone, this is where your shoulder bone is. So the tank top usually like sits here. Um, and it usually goes a little bit lower under your armpit. Um, so I'm gonna try to make that whole section like as flat as possible. And then, yeah, then I'm just gonna go for it. So where I'm at the, shoulder seam like kind of does like a full curve but we're gonna kind of for a tank top you want it to have like it doesn't have to like fit around the shape of your arm so we're just gonna kind of cut like it's gonna be a curve like more curved here and then it's gonna kind of go straight this way um and I would recommend if you want to do this as a one cut tank top um to put it on and like pinch out the line that you want or like draw the line on with a piece of chalk. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna like kind of go for it. I'm gonna try to like leave a little bit of room for this t-shirt or for this pocket. I'm gonna start going like straight down. Um, you see here the t-shirt like kind of has an angle like this way at the shoulder. So we're gonna go like straight down from there and then do the curve. So it's gonna kind of be like wider and skinnier along the seam as we go down. Not quite end up properly. So let's see how well this turned out. So this is a quick and dirty tank top. So that looks pretty good. On like first glance, that's like a pretty good tank top shape. And then we fold it out. Oh, look, we got a sweet, sweet little tank top. Um, super easy. That's your quick and dirty tank top. Nice. Any questions about that one? <laughs> the amount of times that I've like been like going somewhere in the summer and like haven't found something to wear and have like made the quick and dirty tank top like I have one of these that I wear pretty much every single day when I'm just like out and about so it's my favorite favorite thing and it's just like one of those things that I like I made the one cut like this and it was like perfect and I never had to touch it and I've worn it every day since um and it's one of my favorite favorite garments so um the line is so clean, like mine's always very jagged. <laughs> yeah, it can be, you can always go in and like cut those. It can be a little tricky with jerseys sometimes, but jer like like I was saying about how it always rolls, it usually is really good at cutting up, uh, covering up your mistakes. Um, and now I have all these like jersey scraps. One thing you can do actually, if you ever cut the t-shirt, these are great headbands. <laughs> So, um, like I said, with this, like you, if you cut that seam, like keep the um, the like like the sleeve hem because that's like usually pretty stretchy. But you want to cut this seam out. Um, yeah, a t-shirt sleeve is like the world's like easiest headband for most people. This one's really small, so it might not actually work, but it, the, like generally like a men's t-shirt sleeve is like the perfect size to just like make a quick and dirty headband. This will probably fit a kid's head pretty well. Um, but yeah, like this one, it's really stretchy, it's a lot bigger. It's like pretty much the perfect size for a head. And then the thing is too, is it's like, the actual shape of a headband. So it's like really wide on one end and skinny on the other. So um, if you ever need a quick and dirty headband, just cut the sleeve off a t-shirt. Um, yeah, so I guess that's it for me. I don't know if I, if anyone has any other 
questions. I definitely raced through a lot of stuff. So, um, you can always feel free to like send me a message on Hounds of Vintage if you have any questions or are working on any projects and need any advice. I don't mind doing that either. That's very generous of you. Thanks so much, Derek. That was awesome. I definitely learned a lot. Um, if anybody else wants to um, put what they're thinking in the comments or or turn your mic on, say thanks, whatever you, you feel like. Yeah, thanks to everyone who came. How many people were here? Um, there were eight of us and someone had to leave like- Right, I think I saw that message. 15, 20 minutes ago, but um, yeah, hey Shoshana. Well, thanks for everyone for coming. So was I, a lot of my messy, my messy house too. So thanks, Derek. It was really fun. I did this with my daughter. Aw, that's so lovely. I'm so glad. Yeah. Hopefully you learn lots of things that like you can do more projects with. That's like kind of the thing. Like everything that I showed you is like you can literally do it to pretty much any part of your t-shirt. So the possibilities are endless. Yeah, it was super fun. Yeah. It's way more fun like in person because then you can see what everyone else is doing. But this is an, you know, not a bad substitute. I would love to see if people make stuff. If you definitely make stuff, please like let me know. I, I would love it so much. Oh, I, you know what I did? I like cut, I had this long sleeve and then I cut from the elbow down. Nice. And then I did a couple oh. other ones, the cuts, I did cuts on the sleeves. Nice. That's awesome. That'd be really yeah. fun. The fun thing about those though is they're all they're always like can be a bit challenging to get on because I always get caught in them whenever I cut up a bunch of stuff. But well, it's a good thing know. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, you gotta make some sacrifices for fashion, I feel. So yeah. but yeah, um yeah, everything that I made was like really, really like like the quickest and the dirtiest versions of these things that I've made. Um, but if you definitely like take some time to like be more like pristine with your cuts and like plan things out um, and like you know figure out the proportions and measurements of where you want things like you can have a lot of fun with just like plain plain t-shirts and like um, it's a really great way if you like you know sometimes people don't like have a lot of money and they can only afford like a t-shirt from the thrift store you can like there's just like so many things that you can do with it to like make it really like fashionable and hip and yeah super it's like really accessible i think to a lot of people